Okay. All of you have seen this before, right? Inequalities, right? You want to know how to solve them? Yes. You do the exact same algebra you've always done before, right? The only thing that's different is what? That's an inequality, strict inequality, as opposed to an equality, right? But the algebra remains the same, with maybe one exception. Divide the two on both sides, you get x is less than 3. A couple of things that go along with this, because again, I'm sure you've all solved these before, but if I just kind of gloss over everything, then there's the possibility that some people have forgotten or confused or misremembered things from their past, and I want to make sure we're clear on all of that. Is zero a solution to that? Yes. Yes, because that's a less than symbol, so x is less than 3, which means your solutions are all the numbers less than 3, zero is less than 3, so it's a solution, right? Is 5 a solution? No. no, because that's a less than symbol. 5 is less than 3 is not true because 5 is greater than 3, so that's not a solution. Is 3 a solution? No. Why? Because 3 is equal to 3. How would I change this to make 3 a solution? You put the line under it, right? If I change this to x is less than or equal to 3, then you want all the numbers less than 3 as well as the number 3. And you all know the difference between less than or greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, right? Good. Uh, out of curiosity, I always have to mention this. When they teach you that in school nowadays, do they do the alligator thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some students have no idea what I'm talking about, and for like three or four years, people just give me funny looks. But now more students seem to know what I'm talking about, so I think they've gone back from whatever they changed it to, back to the alligator. The alligator opens its mouth toward the bigger number. So this is bigger than that, which means this is less than that. Good with that, right? It actually confused me when I learned it as a kid. I don't catch that. But yes, okay, good. So I'm glad they still teach that because I have to remember it. Okay, but you're all good with that. And all of you understand that your algebra essentially works the exact same, right? So if I have 2x plus 6 is less than or equal to 12, I treat it exactly like inequality, correct? Subtract the 6, divide the 2. You get 2x if you subtract the 6 is less than or equal to 6, divide the 2. x is less than or equal to 6 over 2, which is 3, and you're good. As far as your answers go, and your textbook jumps between different ways to write your answer, I don't really care. Meaning, if the book says write your answer in interval notation, and you know interval notation want to do that, that's great. If it says write it in set builder notation, something similar to this, you can do that. If it says draw it on a number line, I actually don't care about that at all. But if you want to do that, you can. I don't really care. If it's an inequality, solve it. As long as I'm convinced that you know what that means, then we're good. I don't need you to write it three different ways. I'm fine with just one. Okay? Good. Then, suppose we have... 6x plus 3 minus 8x is less than or equal to 12 plus 4x, something like that. Yes, it's more challenging, but it's really the exact same, right? What do you do? Bring all your x's to one side, combine like terms, constants to the other, and solve like normal, right? So you get what? 6x minus 8x is negative 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 12 plus 4x. Subtract the 4x over. Minus 2x minus 4x is minus 6x is less than or equal to 12. Minus 3 is 9. And then divide by negative 6, right? So you get x. 9 divided by negative 6 is negative 3 over 2. What is the one rule that you have to remember? Flip. When you divide by a negative, flip your inequality, correct? That's the only thing that changes when solving these things out. All the algebra is the same, but if you divide by a negative, flip your inequality. And you get x is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves. You all remember that? You all good with that? Okay, one thing I will actually point out as far as this goes, because I'm not all that much into form as opposed to understanding. In theory, right here, you could have just added the 2x over, 
then you would get 3 is less than or equal to 12 plus 4x plus 2x is 6x. Subtract the 12, 3 minus 12 is negative 9 is less than or equal to 6x, and then divide the 6, so it's not negative. x is greater than or equal to negative 9 over 6, which is negative 3 over 2. Are those the same or different? The same. They're just kind of flipped, right? As far as it goes, again, as long as you understand your solutions, I'm not all that concerned with which way you write it. Generally speaking, since we read left to right, we write this thing on the left. But if they mean the same thing, I don't really think it matters. Just convince me. Is negative 5 a solution? How many say yes? How many say, I wanted to say yes, but nobody else raised their hand, so now I'm not sure. How many say no? How many have absolutely no clue whatsoever? Okay, good. Number line. There's zero. Negative three halves is somewhere over here. Negative 1.5. We draw a closed circle because less than or equal to or greater than or equal to means you draw a closed circle on a number line, right? So I draw a closed circle. Which way does my arrow go? Towards zero. X is greater than or equal to negative three halves. Which way is greater than or equal to? Right. That way. To my left, your right. Which means the arrow goes this way. Is negative 5 a solution? No. No, because negative 5 is over there. Is 0 a solution? Yes. Yes, because it's on the right. Maybe you guys should draw these things with number lines and that will help you grasp it better. Again, ultimately, I don't really care how you write it. If you want to follow the way the problems in the book say it, sometimes it'll say intervals, sometimes it'll say number line. You can do that. Do whatever works best to help you understand it so that you can solve it out. Okay? I'll be able to tell if you know what you're doing, because I'll give you problems and applications on the exam, and your answers will have to make sense. So I'll know if you actually know what you're doing or not. I'm not worried about that. Okay? Good. Then let's face it. Those are too easy. And when things are too easy, what do you do? Make it harder. There we go. Okay? Essentially, those are called simple inequalities, because it's just an inequality. And mathematically, it's simple. It's one inequality. There's not much to do but solve it. You can also have what's called compound inequalities, something like this. Uh, negative 2 is less than or equal to 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to 10. I don't care. How is this different? There's two inequalities. So technically, it's compound. Simple is one. Compound is more than one. Two in this case. How do you solve it? There are different ways to do it. And I actually don't care which way you solve it, I just tend to think one is better than the others. How do you solve it? Okay, there are, good, since nobody will answer, we get to do it both ways. Do we have enough time? Oh, yeah, we do, good. Okay, one way to do this is to see it as two inequalities. Negative two is less than or equal to three x plus six, and three x plus six is less than or equal to 10. Solve both of them separately. But thankfully, I have more than one color. So we'll solve this one. Negative 2 is less than or equal to 3x plus 6. How do you solve it? Isolate the x, so subtract the 6. Minus 2 minus 6 is minus 8. Divide the 3. Negative 8 over 3 is less than or equal to x. There we go, simple. Then do the same with the other one, in green. We have 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to 10. Solve for x. Subtract the 6. 3x is less than or equal to 10 minus 6, which is 4. Divide the 3. x is less than or equal to 4 over 3. And there we go. And now, essentially, my solution is all numbers that are both greater than or equal to negative 8 over 3 and less than or equal to 4 over 3. Essentially, it's all the numbers between them, right? Yeah? But... Looking at this, can we see somewhat of a parallel or similarity or symmetry here with the algebra and what we did? Here, when we separated them, what do we do? On both of them, first we added, uh, subtracted the 6, then we divided the 3. Did the exact same thing? So if you did the exact same thing to both inequalities, 
then don't solve them separately. Solve them at the same time. Meaning, look at all that. You want to isolate x? Get rid of the 6. How do you get rid of the 6? Subtract it. Just subtract it from all three parts. Minus 2, uh, minus 6 is minus 8. Is less than or equal to 3x. Is less than or equal to 10 minus 6, which is 4. You want to get the x by itself? Divide the 3 from all three parts at once. Negative 8 over 3 is less than or equal to x. Is less than or equal to 4 over 3. And you're done. There's your solution. And now it's nice and simple and easy to see. And it's clear your answers are between negative 8 over 3 and 4 over 3. Got it? I prefer this. Mathematically, we tend to be somewhat lazy, meaning if we can solve a problem in a simple way, that's what we're going to do because it's the simple, efficient way to do it. Why make it more challenging than it is? So that's easy. That took like half a second. If that's a little confusing because sometimes it confuses people, break it up as two inequalities and solve them separately. It doesn't really matter. You get the same answer, correct? All of you have it in your notes. Same answer both times. doesn't really matter. I'll leave it up to you. Any questions on this? Like, obviously, I mean, again, we're not going to solve this out, but you could do negative 5 is less than or equal to 3 times x plus 2 plus 4x minus 6, uh, not minus 6, minus 8 is less than or equal to 12. And is that any more challenging? Well, it maybe takes an extra step just to do the workout. Distribute here, combine the x's, combine the constants and then solve them all at the same time. Exact same algebra. Nothing changes, which is, a, which is a point here. The only thing different is when you end up multiplying or dividing by a negative on the last step, flip your inequality around, right? And rest assured, since I know that's the only possible problem you'll have, I'll make sure to give you problems where you have to do that just to make sure you're actually doing it correctly. Got it? Everybody ready to go home now? Now, there's more to do, because we need to make it more challenging.